Lock up your vacuum cleaners. In today's video, we're taking a look at a stack of the tiny but mighty playsets that catered to all the 90s kids with a taste for horror. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you're doing well. Now like I teased in the last one, in today's episode I'm excited to share with you another bulk lot and it's a pretty sweet haul of early 90s Mighty Max playsets all complete and all in really nice condition. Now like I mentioned last time we spoke Mighty Max here on the channel, it's a toy line that I didn't have as a kid, I, I didn't have it back in the 90s. In fact if I can remember correctly I wasn't even aware of it. But looking at it nowadays between the monster and creature themes and the really awesome detailed sculpts, paint deco and the way the sets are engineered in a really cool way, if someone had have introduced the toy line and the cartoon to me as a young fella at the right age back in the early 90s, I would have been all over it. So I wasn't able to enjoy it then, but I'm certainly enjoying it as a collector. So let's rip into these sets. Alrighty, so the first two sets will rip through pretty quickly because I already have them in my collection. In fact, we looked at them in detail in my last Mighty Max pickups video. They're both Doom Zones. In fact, most of the sets that we're going to look at today are Doom Zones. And these are both from Series 2 in 1992. We've got Mighty Max Conquers the Palace of Poison, a really cool set complete with uh, Mighty Max, the Mummy King and the Giant Scorpion minifigure. It's awesome. And then the other one is Mighty Max Grapples with Battle Cat. Uh, once again complete, it's got the awesome gore, the, the cannibal caveman looking figure. Uh, it's got the woolly mammoth and it's also got Mighty Max. Two sets that are complete. Uh, but they are spares in the collection. But what's really cool about these two sets, like most of the Doom Zone sets that came in this lot, is that they come with their original card backs, which is awesome. It's just a bonus for me because if you're a friend of this channel, uh, you'll know this. If you're, if you're new to the channel, you can probably tell by what's going on behind me. My favorite way to collect vintage action figures and display vintage action figures is loose. It's nice to have some carded items here or there uh, when I find them at the right price, but I love to collect and display these, these vintage toys loose. Um, so these card backs are just a bonus, but just because I'm a loose collector, I still very much appreciate the artwork on 80s and 90s. Uh, card backs and boxes and I would have to say that Mighty Max artwork personally is probably up there with some of my favorite uh, artwork on card backs and boxes. I, I love the bright colors. I really love the comic book backstories on the card back of each set because every Mighty Max Doom Zone playset is, is a new world, a self-contained world with its own villains and its own creatures. So it's really cool to have the story told uh, through these comic panels here. But my favorite component of the card art of these Mighty Max playsets is the original artwork on the front of the card that depicts the Doom Zone sitting in a hand that is fitting the theme of the playset. And when we turn the card around, we'll see that that artwork becomes the cross cell on the back. So each Doom Zone is sitting in a hand that is fitting of the theme of the Doom Zone. We've got Mighty Max Escapes Skull Dungeon in a skeleton hand, for example. I absolutely love it. And we're not talking about like photographs or like shitty renderings. We're talking about original beautiful artwork I absolutely love it, it's tremendous. Now in addition to all these card backs, this lot also came with an original retail receipt for one of these play for one of these particular playsets. And when I saw all of these items complete with card backs, with purchasing receipt, I had to hit this seller up because I bought from this individual online. And when I was going through this stuff and I saw an original retail receipt, I had to hit them up and say, hey, what's going on here? Are you a collector? Is this a collection that you've amassed and now you're parting with? And, and they said, oh no, th this was mine and my brother's collection from when we were little. Our parents tucked it all away so we didn't lose anything. And I've dusted it off and, and it's off to you. And uh, and that, that, that makes me so happy. I mean, that just adds to the story of these items. I told him I was a collector. I was going to display them all proudly, and I'm blown away by that receipt. We'll look at it a little bit later, but for now, let's rip through the rest of these Mighty Max Doom Zone playsets. And we've got the full run of Series 2 right here, starting with Mighty Max Tangles with the Ape King. And this is awesome. A very much King Kong Skull Island type setting with this giant gorilla head that opens up into this awesome jungle scene. And one of the common themes, like I've mentioned before, of Mighty Max Doom Zones is really cool integration between the exterior and the interior. So when it's closed, the giant gorilla has these, you know, crazy red eyes. And when you open up, 
those red eyes are actually bloody skulls mounted on sticks like trophies here. So that's just awesome. Now we've got three minifigures with this set. We've got Mighty Max, of course. We have this awesome articulated silverback gorilla right here. And then if we pull back some of this jungle foliage, we've got this tribal warrior dude called Xantar. He's got a mask on and he's wielding a weapon that appears to be a human arm, uh, like a skeleton arm, which is just wicked. And it looks like Xantar has a taste for human flesh because he's got a cooking pot here filled with skeleton bones. So that is just awesome. But the creatures don't stop with the minifigures. We've also got this giant cobra which is fixed to the base of the playset, but he's got an articulated head, so that's awesome. That's just a bonus. And the, the detail, the theming here is just fantastic. We've got shrunken heads on pikes. We've got skeletons crushed beneath the silverback gorilla. We've got another decomposing body in the coils of the cobra. Obviously, super morbid for kids' toys, but the type of kid I was, this would have been right up my alley. So Mighty Max Tangles with the Ape King is in the collection. Here's another one I've been trying to track down, Mighty Max Outwits Cyclops. This set's awesome. We've got like a classic uh, Seventh Voyage of Sinbad style horned Cyclops who looks awesome. And we open this guy up by opening the jaw of the Cyclops and then the face to reveal a really cool, you know, creepy dungeon setting. Uh, the horn of the Cyclops is revealed to be a staircase to the upper level and then the eye of the Cyclops is actually this really weird looking tentacled eyeball monster. That's really cool. We've got another accessory here in this little blue cage. Under the cage is our hero, Mighty Max. And then we've got the main villain of the set. This guy's called the Vile Torturer. And, uh, and he looks like an awesome kind of uh, medieval troll. So that's really cool. And this, this set follows a pretty standard structure of a lot of the Doom Zone play sets. We've got our base level, we've got our vertical play area. Tons of detail, a lot of little hidey holes or holding cells here. Uh, we've got a sliding door here to reveal one area. We've got sort of a tomb that swivels open to reveal another area to hide your figures. But the more you look, the more you notice awesome little details like these little baby eyeball creatures growing inside the jaw of the Cyclops, skulls and skeletons everywhere, a torture rack, and a hangman's noose in a kid's toy. Gotta love the 90s. Next up, we go back to the well-worn creepy crawly theme for Mighty Max Sting's Scorpion with this awesome giant scorpion. He's got articulated pincers and a stinger. And when we open this set up, One hour later. And when we open up the scorpion, the legs and pincer of the scorpion are revealed to be this massive mechanical, uh, what's called a scorper bot with a perfect little seat for Max to uh, drive the thing. And then the pincers of the scorpion are actually fixed to the play area. And what's really cool is this is another set that came with the original card back and the comic on the card back reveals that these are called the Grabatron and it's a weapon that's been created by the villain of the set, also called Scorpion, but he doesn't look much like a scorpion, it looks more like a, like a mad scientist in a hazmat suit. And he's using the Grabatron to try and defeat Max. And this set has some really cool colors, some really awesome elements, but once you take the Scorper bot out, as cool as this thing looks from the outside, it's, it's really bare on the inside compared to a lot of the other sets that we've looked at, but still unique and still really cool to have Mighty Max Sting Scorpion complete in the collection. It's 1993 and Jurassic Park is everywhere, so you know we have to have a dino theme set or two. And that's what we've got here with Mighty Max Blows Up Dino Lab, a really nicely sculpted and painted Triceratops head. And this is a pretty cool set. When we open it up, it reveals like a, an underground bunker, an underground laboratory with some awesome detail. We've got dinosaur enclosures, we've got lab equipment, uh, we've got this pretty cool like metallic walkway over a pit with a like a swamp dinosaur trying to claw its way out or a swamp creature trying to claw its way out of that pit. And we've then got this 
random little volcano that opens up to reveal either a weapon or some type of machinery. Now we've actually got four minifigures with this set. We've obviously got Mighty Max. If we open up this enclosure, we have our Raptor figure, which is really cool. We've got our main villain in the set, Professor Zygote holding a test tube. And then we've also got this awesome looking pterodactyl sculpted in like a pliable plastic with a really detailed skeleton. So that looks, that looks really cool. And this is another set that came with the original card back. And when you look at the backstory here, it says Professor Zygote is recreating dinosaurs at his volcano incubator. So that little machine that folds out from the volcano must be some sort of incubation machine. And when you go through this comic, it's awesome. We've got dinosaurs fighting and we've got Max making wisecracks like, wow, they should make a movie out of these guys. That sounds familiar. So tons of detail and play features packed into this set. And when we close it up, we have that awesome integration between the exterior and the interior as the horns of the Triceratops are the beak of the pterodactyl, the tail of the raptor, and the tip of the volcano. This next one's awesome. Mighty Max caught by the man-eater. And I love this set. We've got like this bloodthirsty looking Megalodon style creature covered in rusty hooks and battle scars and rope. And when we open up the shark, it's a bit of a curveball because it looks like quite an ancient creature. But then when we open it up, we've kind of got some a sci-fi setting here with this futuristic looking sub. And when we open up the submarine, we've got our Max mini figure along with Calamaris, this sci-fi Davy Jones looking squid man with a trident. And uh, we've obviously got our Max figure. And it's not just Calamaris that Max has to deal with. Uh, Calamaris has two of these attack squids that double as the side fins of the shark. And what's also really cool about Mighty Max caught by the man-eater is we've got the dorsal fin of the shark folding out to be a manta ray escape vehicle for Max with his little spot there and more of these sci-fi details. So there's just, there's a ton of cool stuff going on with this set. And the layout of the set with the submarine inside the shark Kind of makes me think of Monstro from Pinocchio. So an awesome all-round set, another cool one for the collection. For the last Doom Zone in this bulk lot, we're back to the insect theme with the Series 3 Doom Zone Mighty Max Squishes Fly. And this is a really interesting set. It breaks from the typical base and vertical area structure with a, a really complex structure. So we've got the front opening up and the wings of the fly are revealed to be attached to this smaller fly creature called Drax, one of the villains of the set. And when we open up the back of the play set, the fly's legs are attached to this uh, like cybernetic futuristic crawler called the Maggot Scavenger, and, and that's being driven by Max. And then on top of that, the fly's eyes actually open up to reveal a chamber, like a cockpit inside, and we've got the main villain of the set called Fly. So there's so much going on here, lots of different minifigures, the Maggot Scavenger vehicle, and within the actual set itself, there's too much detail to call out. Um, some things that I really love, we've got like a web of fly insides with some bodies behind it. We've got like a series of computer monitors up the front here, which kind of, you know, mimic the mosaic vision of a fly. So this is just an awesome mishmash of organic and sci-fi elements, blended beautifully, and just as a bonus, it comes with the awesome original card back. I've mentioned previously that to me, the Doom Zone play sets are like the sweet spot for the Mighty Max toy line. The smaller sets, like the Horror Heads and Shrunken Heads, there's no real play value there. The larger, more expansive sets, they no longer fit in a kid's pocket. It kind of defeats the purpose of what they were meant for. Uh, but the Doom Zones are like the Goldilocks point in the toy line. They're the ones that I'm going out of my way to collect. Uh, but hey, I'm happy to pick up a, a, a couple of the other sets along the way. And just as a bonus, this lot included a couple of Horror Heads. So let's look at them. First up, we've got the 1992 Horror Head. Mighty Max defeats the Vamp Biter. And when we open it up, pretty cool in the way of sculpting and theming. Two minifigures. Obviously, we've got Max. And the highlight to me is this really cool Nightwing creature. Awesome sculpting detail. And I really like the way that it's sculpted in a way where it, its feet clutch onto that stoop there as opposed to sitting. It kind of grips 
that, that shelf there, that ledge, so that's awesome. And then we've got some other sculpted details here. We've got bats, we've got blood. Um, so cool detail, displays nicely, but like I mentioned, not too much in the way of play value there. And this one came with the original card back, which is awesome. Uh, lovely artwork and uh, a, a more simplified uh, comic backstory, but, but still really cool. And we've got another 1992 horror head, Mighty Max Pulverizer's Sea Squirm. We open this set up and we've got an underwater setting. We've got coral and starfish and buried treasure sculpted on the base of the set. We've got three figures with this one. We've obviously got Mighty Max. We've got this sea serpent or sea squirm minifigure. And then we've got this guy right here. I'm not sure what this is. This is called Krillor. Uh, don't quite know what to make of it, but judging by the footprint for Max on the back, uh, I'm assuming this is a friendly vehicle or friendly uh, creature, I should say. And when we close the setup, as always, we've got that awesome integration between the interior and exterior. Uh, both of those two larger minifigures comprise like the eyes, nose, tongue, and horns of this exterior creature. So that's awesome. Another one that'll display nicely in the collection. And uh, once again, we've got an original card back here with some awesome artwork, so that's cool. Last of all, we've got one of the Mighty Max Dreadheads, which were essentially just really small heads with kind of a key ring type hook, furry hair, and a little Max figure inside, but nothing much to do with it. But that's okay, still a cool looking item. And, and at the end of the day, this is just a bonus. This guy's called Carbon, and I love the, the sculpted decomposition. We've got the, the, the hanging flesh where the head's been severed. And it, it's, it's, it's cool, it's a little bit like a, you know, makes me think of a Mighty Max take on a Mad Ball. So that's just another little added bonus for this lot. Now I mentioned the original purchase receipt. Here it is here, it's a big W receipt from the Kiwana Waters store on the 19th of January, 1995 at 3 p.m. And it's actually for this Doom Zone set here, the Mighty Max Grapples with Battle Cat, because I can see the Big W price sticker uh, at the exact same price on that card back. And that's really interesting to me because this is a Series 2 playset. This was released in 1993. It's dated 1993 on the card back, but we've got a 1995 receipt, which is interesting to me. I don't know if Mighty Max Playsets had a long shelf life here in Australia, or if probably more likely they just took a year or two to get here, which might explain why I didn't really discover or have any awareness of Mighty Max as a kid, because in 1995 I was 11 and I was starting to move out of playing with toys and focus more on video games and that sort of thing. So that might explain it, but it might sound strange to some people, but that receipt was... was uh, just such a special thing to open, special thing to discover in this lot, and I do want to find a, a, a place to somehow display it. Again, it might seem silly. To me, it's a piece of toy history, and it just is part of the story of these play sets that are now going to take pride of place in my collection. But look, I'd say I've banged on just about long enough. That's it for the Mighty Max haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope to hear from you in the comments. You can also hit me up on Instagram at Crusher Collects. If you've got photos of you as a kid tearing open Mighty Max Doom Zone playsets on Christmas morning in 1992 or 1993 or running amok losing all the minifigures, I'd love to see them. I love to see 80s and 90s pictures of collectors like us playing with this stuff back in the day. So feel free to tag me in them or, or, or send me a DM with them. But above all, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you're a dead set legend. And until next time, cheers.